What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and Brave implemented this protocol that's called IPFS to safely browse the decentralized web. And I have to be honest with you guys, I didn't know what IPFS was. So naturally I started researching and it sounds like a nothing new. It is very similar to BitTorrent, a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, but it was implemented very interestingly for a specific purpose of web browsing in a decentralized manner. So if you don't know, guys, uh, what when you host content on the HTTP content, you host it on a web server, and then you publish that content, and you get a public IP address. Public IP address points to a DNS, and that DNS points to a name that is human friendly and then when you it's it's uh, when you consume the dns entry you point to the ip address which points to the server which hosts the content right so the web and, and the internet is, is 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 designed upon the idea of having to know the name of a server to access content this ipfs flips the coin says well forget about where the data is stored if you know the content that you want to access, just tell us that and we'll get it we'll get it to you. How? This is how it works essentially. So your files or files and blocks within it are given unique fingerprint, cryptographic hash, remove duplication across the network. Then each network node, so there is a network of all these IPFS nodes, and all of them stores these with indexing information, obviously, to allow it to search. Right? And then when you look up a file to download, you're asking the network to find the nodes that are storing the content. So, so it's the reverse. I'm looking for this file. Where does it exist? And then you download the content, right? So it's, 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 it's a little bit different. Very interesting. So Brave. But, and and uh, before we go to the Brave, IPFS is supported. There is a desktop client. There is a command line. There is... Uh, a Go implementation, there's a JavaScript implementation. So there are clients that you can use to consume IPFS node content. But for the longest time, obviously, the barrier to entry is very high, especially for normal people. Brave implements this natively. Now you can go and type in IPFS, that, that, the URI to a content that is hosted on IPFS, and you can download it. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Let's read the article and see. Let's see the let's see the impact on this, and let's see, like, what does it mean, and whether browsers will actually support this thing. Let's jump into it. San Francisco, California, January 19, twenty twenty one. IPFS, the peer to peer hypermedia protocol designed to make web faster, safer, and more open, has been integrated into Brave, the fast privacy oriented br browser. Reinventing the web for users, publisher, blah, blah, blah. Incorporated into today's Brave desktop browser update 1.19, Brave 24 million monthly active user can now access content directly from IPFS by resolving an IPFS URL via a gateway or installing a full IPFS node in one click. That's new. You can install... IPFS from, oh, this is a game changer, dude. <laughs> so they not they made the client part easy. Now they also made the server part easy. You can host and consume client. That's a game changer. We'll see what all that means in a minute. When installing a full node, this will allow Brave users to load content over IPFS peer-to-peer -peer network. It's exactly like BitTorrent. We have done this, right? Like if you have a large file that you want to share, BitTorrent is the best thing because you're gonna it's gonna be split into multiple, uh, not really split, right? But it can be downloaded from multiple nodes concurrently, right? That's speeding way much faster and then reassembled on the client side. Um, integrating IPFS provides brave users with significantly enhanced browsing experience, increasing the availability of the content offloading server cost you don't need servers anymore because you are a server essentially and uh, 
I have a lot of questions when it comes to like hosting IPFS. If my computer, my Mac behind NAT became an IPFS node, how the hell people can, can download stuff from it? Because I'm behind NAT, right? I have no idea. So I'm, I need to make a video, full video about after researching IPFS, like how they exactly do that, right? It's just, it's not easy. I don't have like a public IP address that people can just connect through. I'm, I'm behind NAT and firewalls. It's, this is not 1995 anymore where everybody had a public IP address. So again, we have a lot of questions to answer. UDP hole punching, what not? God knows what's going to go there. From the content publisher and improving the overall resilience of the internet. Molly McKellen, project lead at IPFS, said, bringing the benefits of the distributed web to brave users. I, <laughs> brave users, get it? IPFS efforts to remove systematic data censorship by corporation and nationwide states are now strengthened through the integration of Brave. This is, this is a very big topic and, and very political, right? I don't, I'm not gonna, whether you're against or with censorship, it makes sense to censor some data, obviously. Sometimes it doesn't make sense, like, like uh, blocking COVID-19 information. That's just ridiculous, right? But for violent information, stuff like that, that's debatable, obviously. Phishing attack, like uh, this website is, is phishing people, pretend to be Bank of America. You got to block that thing, right? So anyway, it's a big topic. Right? Web users across the world and able to access restricted content, including, for example, parts of Wikipedia and in Thailand, over 100,000 block. Oops, I didn't know that. But Wikipedia is blocked in Thailand. All right. In further aspect of integration, projects building on IPFS such as app development uh, platform, textile, and fleek will automatically enable anyone to deploy a website accessible to Brave. So, so they are they are playing with both ends. I thought they are just consuming. Dude, this is big. We're thrilled to be the first uh, browser to offer native IPFS integration. So the native part is very, very critical. Brave's uh, 1 million verified content with the power to seamlessly serve content to millions of new users across the globe uh, via a new and secure protocol. IPFS gives the user a solution to problem centralized server, uh, creating a central point of failure for content access. That's the problem with centralized server, right? If you're, or, or, or like what happened to Parler, right? Parler is centralized, right? It's hosted on Amazon, and Amazon just took the rug behind them, and then just Parler went, went offline. Now, regardless whether you are with this decision or not, that's that's just something to think about, right? Centralized information can be taken down. Very simple. It's just central point of failure. That doesn't mean that decentralized is not dangerous, right? <laughs> Think about it. Decentralized content is also dangerous. Uh, IPFS, let's, let's go to that article. IPFS, cloud layer phishing. It was like an attack. Phishing attack distributed through cloud flare. So let's not, let's not assume this is all rosy, obviously, guys, right? Cloud flare supported IPFS and some malformed people used IPFS to host phishing websites through Cloudflare. So people were served phishing bad, dangerous content, right? They were just stealing their content through IPFS, and there's no way to take it down. So this is like a, a double-edged sword. What do you do? It's, a, it's not something I can discuss in a video, obviously, and it's not going to be answered. So it's always, it's a struggle, and it's like, okay, what does it mean? It's always an, a good idea to decentralize for certain users. I'm, I'm, again, I'm discussing this as an engineer, right? Beauty of decentralization is, is so powerful, right? First, the speed. Se second, no, there is no central point of failure. And this is not the first time we discussed this. Like, blockchain uh, tries to solve this problem on the web, but it's a very thick technology, blockchain. And, and it's not as easy to adopt as this protocol, which... I don't know much about, to be honest, but very interesting. Uh, I'd like to, 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 to hear your comments, guys, about this whole thing. And that's it, guys. Very, very interesting. Really very, very interesting technology. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure Firefox and Chrome will follow the lead. Uh, IPFS is just a power call, right? There's nothing fancy about it. It aims to surpass HTTP. Right, so this is the replacement of HTTP, essentially. 
And I'll be honest, guys, I thought about the centralization concept of HTTP, and I think you can build a protocol on top of HTTP, not really a protocol, just architect your application in a way such that it reads the content from multiple servers at the same time. And uh, if you think about it, we kind of are doing this with load balancers and proxies and reverse proxies, right? If you, if you go to a certain, certain DNS entry, you get one IP address, right? But if your client support a multiplexing HTTP protocol, such as HTTP2 or 3, or even quick, if you're low, low level, then you make multiple requests to the same IP address concurrently, that goes to that centralized reverse proxy, which is almost not the final destination. It's never is, right? So that reverse proxy then shuffle into multiple servers at the back end, and then fetches the CSS from one server, such as the JavaScript from another, fetches the HTML from another, fetches, I don't know, some database content from another endpoint, all of them happening on the pedal, and then comes back and then shovels back to the company. So technically still it's centralized as if as a system, but you can take this idea and run with it and make the DNS, for example, return multiple IP addresses where the content reside. That's one idea I've been thinking about. This flips the coin, which is very interesting, right? I don't know where this will go, to be honest. I find it personally interesting. And uh, I'll leave the comments back to you guys. What do you think about this IPFS? Uh, do you think it's the future of the web? Um, if yes, no, let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.